Hello everyone, and welcome back to a, another another one of these untier talks, where we satisfy all your untier needs, assuming you only need PU, I guess, because we're not really touching other untiers. But that's not the point. Uh, today I'm joined, as as always, always of our uh, sample size of two, uh, by by user Hajad. What's up, guys? And uh, today we figured it's a bit of a mid-period, because by the time we, we uh, upload this, uh, the Archaeop suspect will be over. It might be banned. It might not be banned. We don't know yet. So uh, for now, we're just going to kind of talk about the viability rankings. It's kind of a topic that uh, I've wanted to hit for a while. Uh, there, hasn't been, it's, there hasn't been too much specific drama with them. Uh, there's been the Shinotic and Wormadam trash rankings that have been mildly de divisive. Uh, but other than that, it's less of a specific drama, more just a... I feel like there's a lot to unpack there. Um, mm -hmm. So... Definitely. I think the big, the big thing is uh, how the council looks at D-rank is often very different from how everyone else looks at D-rank and just the lower ranks in general. Um... Jed, when was the last time you actually used like anything below C plus? Um, I I tend to stay uh, very much so towards the uh, the higher end of the spectrum when it comes down to viability rankings. But there are like a, a kind of, uh, like a few cool niche Pokemon like below C plus. So I, I'll give you an example that um, you know Behem. That's a D rank Pokemon. Yeah, Behem is. Um... And, Defensive nasty block PM is like a, a huge threat. I've seen you uh, other thing. messing around with it. Yeah, other things like um, drift limb is in C minus. That thing can be a threat, and uh, mm -hmm. stuff like um, Vigoroth as well. That stuff is uh, pretty like decent. Like, I don't know. Vigoroth so still feels them. just very awkward with null in the tier, but I can see where it'd still yeah. work. By the way, I'm not really, I'm not putting up any uh, images for this, obviously, it's a podcast, but I'm looking at the viability rankings. It might enhance your listening experience to actually, like, look at them and get context, because, like, really, once you go below C, um, th there's a few exceptions for, like, genuinely decent mons that you might see a bit more frequently. There's, like, Munchlax isn't stupidly uncommon with the Aurorus being what it is. There's a uh, silvery water, um, something like Servine, I think definitely gets a bit more usage than other stuff, but really they're just not good. Um, yeah. I'm, especially for someone like me who really doesn't go out of their way to try to use low ranks, I tend to very much, um, not, if there's a Mon that I look at and I really think I can figure out a niche with it, uh, then I'll pick it up. But I don't go out of my way to try to use low ranks. And uh, because of how niche and awkward they are, it really means uh, a lot of these ranked Mons don't don't get touched that much at all outside of very specific teams, like Lee Vanny on webs or outside of your low ladder teams. Um, which is really what brings yeah. us to how you look at D-Rank and Shinotic and Wormadam Trash. Because they seem like they've gotten a fair amount of support, and I believe both of us are pretty much against ranking either of them at the moment. Yeah, well, my perspective on like either of those Pokemon is that, well, is there a Pokemon that can, uh, like, if, you, if you're building with Shinotic or Wormadam and say, um, this team would just be better if I had this of this Pokemon. So if, when I, whenever I try to build with, say, Wormadown Trash, it's all, it always feels like, uh, why why is this not a Pharisee? Why is this not a... Uh, Probopass. Yeah, exactly. The other and, big and competition. Like, yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Like Especially when it comes down to the Pharisee point, sh um, Wormadown Trash, it just feels like a Pharisee that... Um, that doesn't maintain momentum. Like Pharisee, it has a lot of ways to keep momentum flowing, like spikes and each seed. Oh no, it's very it annoying. It's, uh, yeah, I don't think people realize how much pressure leech seed can put on you because even if you get in your pyro or whatever, and it, it gets leech seed, you can be like, eh, I'm only taking leech leech seed for a couple of turns, but that can really rack up, especially if you need it healthy. 
Uh, exactly, and so like the main reason you ha you would have like as a, a viable defense of worm dam is that uh, ice ice resist. So mm -hmm. like uh, that's the other thing that Pharisee and well does it Pharisee and Proopos especially they don't really have is like a well Pro does region. but it's weak to earth power. Uh, yeah, no. you which... could safely switch in Proopos the entire game versus an Auroras, whereas you could no. and weak to Focus Blast like, versus uh, Abomas now. Yeah, exactly. So if you really wanted, like, if your team really needed a check versus the ice types, Wormgram Trash might find its way onto your team, but I don't think it's just it's worth ranking it based on the uh, based on the idea that it's got it has this ice resist ability over the rest of them. Why we should rank it as a result of that, basically. Right, and I think the main argument that people are using to rank it is look at what Peppa Dutch. Pepe Duce, I'm going to pronounce it as incorrectly as I can every single time, um, has has done with it in seasonal. Look, he's in he's in the winner side of grand finals. He used Wormadam to beat people like Tasker. Look at that. And my real problem is you look at the game, and it's like, sure, it is absolutely a mon that can work, but a mon that can work is not the same thing as a mon we rank because absolutely, Wormadam, Shinotic, they can totally do their job absolutely fine. But something can just do it better, and and that and that's just the key point, you know. We you as a suicide rocks lead, you could use Archaeops, or you could use Graveler. Graveler's got sturdy rocks; it could do it fine. But that doesn't mean we're gonna rank Graveler because even though it can totally function and do its job, there's no real reason to use it. And uh, I don't know that that's necessarily clicked with a lot of people. And that's also really how I feel with Shenotic. Its physical bulk is significantly, much noticeably worse than Tangela. Um, so it's like a ridiculous amount. Tangela, after it's been knocked off, still has better physical bulk than Shenotic. Like, yeah, holy, great. holy cow. Uh, then obviously it's a bulky grass, so you also have to think about how much am I competing with Pharisee. And Shenotic functions differently, but still, Pharisee is always going to be the go-to bulky grass. So you're using Shenotic as this check to things like Kingler, Physical Floatzel, uh, Dark Types, so you have like Absol, uh, Girder, and Tangela just does all of this fine. So what does Shenotic have? A bit of Fairy Stab, so it's a bit more threatening. Eh, and it doesn't get knocked off. And it has a bit better special bulk, I guess. Like, how much are you really valuing that in order to say, I want to put that in D-Rank? Do you really ever, like, need to use it as opposed to anything else? And that's something just uh, people, when they want to rank it, are not addressing at all. Yeah, I, I think a, a good example of that is the... Um... You remember when CL brought us? I think it was Smog Tour Finals. Yeah, he brought a Pikachu. Pikachu. Mm -hmm. He brought a Pikachu, and like that's not because Pikachu is this amazing Pokemon that uh, that's just like that's gonna break every team in half. It's not. It's not. It's nothing like that. It's like he had a he had this team. And he wanted to have a bit of fun. That's what I feel like. World Am Trash and uh, Shinotic are on a less grand scale, I say. So it's like a a really fun one that you can slap onto a team. Occasionally, it might do the same amount of work as a uh, a work as a Pharisee, sorry, or um, you know, or a Tangela, but you know, it's the likelihood of it doing uh, that work is uh, much less. And I feel like that's the uh, that's the that's the key separation. Mm -hmm. In fact, Pikachu is really interesting because uh, the other major thing I see people pointing to for look at random mon that people don't consider getting used in the major place is you know this. Pikachu and OSD finals, and then there's uh, the Pachirisu from VGC, um, okay. which I just think is funny because it's totally the opposite thing. Pachirisu actually had like some kind of relevant niche that literally nothing else could do, which it performed just okay enough. And it was like, what, the typing plus follow me plus super fang got to, I don't even know. Um, yeah. That is just so critically different when you look at something like Pachi Risu that just distinguishes itself really well and if you look at the rest of D-Rank it's so much more distinguished uh, aside from the Mons that I think we should really have unranked at this point uh, but still like Swoobat what else is acting like Swoobat 
in its specific kind of method of setup sweeper. Nothing really. It's terrible at the niche, that's why it's D, but nothing. Uh, Meowstic M, easily best dual screens mon. Dual screens isn't very good, we leave it in D, but that's a thing, right? Um, Pretty much. Right? Hippopotas for sand. Gorgeist small is ridiculously annoying as sub C, and I've even been messing with Scarf recently. Um, all, all, all these things like that. And I feel like from D rank, there's, there's certainly things we could remove. Um, I'm not a fan of Stunfisk, but other people like it. Uh, there's still like Grumpig absolutely needs to go. It's just bad at its niche as like the fire is a nice resist. It's just bad at that. Let's be real. Um, yeah, Grumpig, that's just not a good one. Not no. Good one. No, it's not. I really, I really tried to use it. I want to be good. I want it to be good. I love Grumpig, but uh, yeah, stick to Z. The, the the point being, these monsters differentiate themselves like much more, which is weird because we were saying before, oh, you never use them. Oh, they're just not great. Um, yeah, but like they do have much larger niches on paper. It's just that those niches are so hard to fit on teams. In fact, looking through the lower ranks, the only mons I can really say just like, what is their niche again? I mean, like, it is like kind of Masquerain, um, sort of Vigoroth in that it's a bit outclassed by Munchlax and Null, but still, uh, this two cannon, I guess. Uh, but for the most yeah. part, they're just way different. Yeah, two cannon is quite a fun Pokemon, actually. I've been messing around with like a Swords down to bullets he'd set uh, to hit Regirox. That's been that's been quite uh, like effective as an, as a like a, a Regirox because people they know that it carries bullets, but like people just go eh, I'll, I'll switch in Regirox anyway because it'll probably it'll probably tank. Yeah, so e even like, then, uh, I agree that two cannons just stupid hard to switch into. Yeah, but like apart from like, when are you realistically gonna think I really need a Regirox? via a flying type that has bullet seed. Like that <laughs> that realistically is quite a quite a niche spot for it. So I think it I think it might be like what well, it might be worth like a, a rank down at some point. Oh yeah, I think two cannon to D is probably a pretty slam dunk nomination. As with I'd probably drop Zeb Strike at this point because electric types in general aren't good. Maybe even drop my Nectric a rank two because neither of them are really much good. Yeah. Yeah, no, Zeb Striker is one of those Pokemon where, like, even if the opposing team doesn't have an alleged community, Zeb Striker really struggles versus pretty much any team that has any relevant form of speed control or priority. And mm -hmm. It's really weak as well, so it's like, you can, it hardly does any damage in the long run. So, if you're looking at it on a, on a very, like, simplified basis, where if you want a Pokemon, and then preferably if you want to win the game, it kills one or two things, um, Zeb Striker won't do that. It's not. It's not that type of Pokemon. It's uh, it's it's fast, which is its redeeming point, and it's got some decent coverage. But if you're if you're doing five percent to Pokemon, that doesn't really matter, does it? No. And speaking of fast, uh, if Archeops ends up going, uh, which you'll know by the time you're listening, like its its speed isn't even really worth it anymore over Mainectric and and uh, Alolichu, because then. It's beating like what Floatzel and Alolan Persian and Lycanroc, and that's it. Like big fucking whoop. Don't forget. Yeah, don't forget the scary Swoobat. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Swoobat. We were just we were just talking about that. Silly me. Oh, and uh, it beats Lipard. I I think Lipard's one oh six, right? That's faster than Manectric. Uh yeah, Lipard hits three forty two. Uh, at the jolly nature. I uh, see. I don't do it by. I do it by base speed, not by those numbers. So. Oh no, yeah, no, no, no. that's yeah. my mental thing. But I'm pretty sure Lightbird is uh, 106. Anyway, um, that's the low ranks. Let's 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 uh, let's move up to the things that you might actually see in in your in your average game of PU. Um, yeah. Because I I do feel like another thing people have been talking about is. Uh, a plus rank versus A rank versus A minus rank. It's it's weird. Yeah. Uh, a plus rank and A rank have a lot of mons that you could easily say, I think these two things should switch. And then A minus rank, on the other hand, is just I feel very separate. Um, I wouldn't yeah. I wouldn't necessarily consider raising anything from A minus other than like maybe Kangaskhan. Um, yeah. 
and it's kind of its own distinct thing. In terms of viability, yeah. it's a noticeable step down, very noticeable. Yeah, I feel like the difference between A- minus and the A and A- plus rank is that in A+, plus or A rank, you can easily envisage all of the Pokemon there as a, as a member of the team, right? Whereas yeah. with A-, minus, you have to be looking at a very specific type of team in order to make that Pokemon really work. So, for example, if you have Exeggutor, you're usually using either a, a balanced team with Specs Exeggutor or like a Trick Room-based team with Trick Room Exeggutor. Yeah, Exeggutor and Floatzel are the, uh, the, um, yeah, like post, the poster boys of that kind of very specific team. Exactly. And like Kangaskhan, you're usually running it with Spike Support. And then Lilligan, you're also running it with Spike Support. And Togedemaru is if you need like some really decent speed control but not much power. And Type Null has that, uh, the bulk, but it doesn't really fit on every single mm-hmm. team. Yeah, it's it's, I think Togedemaru is uh, kind of unique from those. It, it's I think it's ten times more splashable than the rest of the rank. It's just not as good as at what it does yeah, like, compared to like Prime Ape and Kingler in the above rank. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not as good as a cleaner as like a Prime Ape, but it's got that speed to just in case you know, and the uh, the defensive utility that Togedemaru. Yeah, gives. that's really important to how it functions. I feel. Yeah, I mean, just to me, the divide is so different that I almost would love to have like take a minus and make it like a fourth sub rank within B, because really, then to me, like S, A plus, and A, they're just in a tier of their own. Those are the mons that are just way better, way more splashable, way more everything than everything else in the meta. Um, by such a noticeable margin, I just feel like they'd fit separately. There's no point because really, like each sub rank is its own thing. So that that's if we did that, that'd just be semantics. I just feel like the difference there is so noticeable. Yeah, I'd, I'd definitely say that 100. Yeah, um, but within A plus and A, I feel like it's very reasonable to suggest a lot of things shifting. Um, Sensu could definitely be considered to move down. Reggie Rock, yeah. perhaps, if Archeops goes, I, I definitely start feeling the need to use it much less. Um, 100%, yeah. Electros is always going to be a mon that like shifts in and out of how good it is depending on trends. Right now, we've gone a little bit more offensive. I think it's a little bit less useful than it was when we shifted it up, but that'll probably yeah. cycle back around again. Uh, and then with an A rank... Um, Kingler is Kingler. Yep. I mean... And uh, more people have been starting to use Crotum as well. And because we don't really have that many fairy types, uh, Barker Fairy, like... Oh, uh, Crotum, Crotum is Crotum. devastating. Yeah, that, that could definitely be like considered for a, a, a rank up within reasonable time, I think. Yeah, it's, it's, so weird to, it's so weird to prep for, in my opinion. The best way you handle yeah. it is these physical breakers that often don't really want to switch in because so little is going to be handling it defensively unless you have some particular like encore not really common or like opposing combine pokemon that can beat it 1v1 that's pretty much just clef yeah what else what else is even running combine in this meta there's ghosts and psychics that are all weak to it oh combine trampa obviously excuse my uh, mistake (laughs) trampa is clearly the uh Man, what even happened to Drampa? Drampa was so good and it was so common because it would destroy every, you know, you couldn't switch into it. So it was like the specs camera up of this generation, except way better. And then just fell off the fucking map. Yeah, I think, I think people, they just shifted from more like passive styles of teams. And now the more passive styles of teams just generally kind of beat it. So if you look at like the, the more common passive teams, and now all like based around Barry and Clefairy uh, spike stacking core because mm-hmm. that's the way that you can maintain your momentum much easier than uh, if you were to go with other like spike stacking cores, mm-hmm. including say Mesprit, right, for example. So yeah. Drampa therefore gets like less opportunities to wall break really effectively. Like versus a Pharisee, the Pharisee can just protect and then just switch on your coverage. Or if you if you have the uh, a fairy, um, you just softball, see what he locks himself into, and then switch into the appropriate thing. It's like all the passive teams, they almost have like built in ways to beat it at the moment. It just yeah. kind of it struggles with that a lot. And they just and didn't used to because we didn't use clef like that. 
Exactly, and if you shift your team, like you shift your Dramper to play uh, play against that, so say you run like a Calm Mind Dramper instead of the spec set, the usual spec set, um, then Dramper just struggles so much with uh, the common, the more common types of teams, which is like the, uh, you know, the Mesprit, uh, Mesprit, Hitmonchan, uh, yeah. Team type team. Once you once you're doing like sixty to Hitmonchan instead of doing ninety five, it's it's noticeable. Yeah. yeah, especially and then and then you just like you're not really doing what Dramp is supposed to be doing at that point. It's like Dramp is supposed to be like un like getting free turns on a on a recover or something and then just nuking something. But when you when you take that away from it, it just does it doesn't function correctly it doesn't function well as a wall breaker considering that it's not without a choice base it's not really that strong and then also uh it's just sort of it's it's kind of weak without a choice specs as well like it's 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 just a mod in a really tough situation i i also think that the magwater becoming a prominence is just sort of it's really sort of taking the limelight away from it because magwater shifted the method towards more carvings as well it really didn't appreciate that as well. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and I think the Pharaoh Clef thing being so common has really not just tanked Trampa, but uh, there's a lot of random defensive mons that would probably otherwise be fine. But you see them in low ranks, you know, the Roselia, the Metang, uh, the, the, the um, damn it, I just had it, the uh, Bronzor, the, even Tangela for a time, even though that's coming back, the, Kamala or whatever, just you know, mons that are so much harder to touch because that core is so obligatory. Uh, I think we're going to be wrapping it up pretty soon now. So, any final thoughts that you wanted to get in on the VR? Because I think we've touched pretty much all the stuff I'm most interested in. Uh, yeah, no, I'd say I'd say the VR actually looks um, quite good at the moment in terms of like the uh, accuracy. The ranks. Yeah, like the accuracy of like what you're most likely to be using on your team, I think it, it does like represent how the PU meta actually looks much better than uh, some other viability rankings. Um, I'd, I'd say the most part needs to be worked on is towards the bottom end. So if you have any nominations, obviously uh, put those in the, the, VR, uh, the VR thread. For sure. And if you have any questions or you know topics for us or anything like that, feel free to leave in the comments. I've been Megazord and he's been Hajad, and I think that's uh, all we got for you guys this week.